PlayStation has come a long way. After Sony created the PlayStation out of spite for Nintendo partnering with Philips instead of them, Join me, Link, and I will make your face the greatest in Koridai, or else you will die. I'm sure that was totally worth it. Ever since the first PlayStation released back in 1995, Sony has become a huge juggernaut in the gaming world today. They have a loyal fan base, their consoles sell millions, and they're seen as a pioneer for constantly pushing the industry forward with their big budget blockbuster hits. How bad do I smell? But if you ask me, I sort of think their gaming output today is sort of stagnating. Yeah, the big blockbuster hits are gray and all, but that seems to be all they want to make now. It's either AAA or it needs to go away. And because of this, their games are all just starting to blend together. Over the shoulder third person action game, sometimes with an open world, sometimes not. It's all starting to feel the same. And from the looks of things, that's probably not gonna change anytime soon. This is also leading to uh, a bit of a bit of a drought of something the PS5 desperately needs to be a worthwhile console. I, I, I can't really put my finger on what it is, but, but it needs it badly. This really started around the PS3 era, not nearly to the same degree, but it's where it all started. All their experimental titles either flopped or had next to no faith. D did you know Demon Souls was funded by them and published by them in Japan, but they had so little faith in it doing well in the West, they refused to publish it outside Japan, and Atlas had to do it for them. Yeah, the first actual Souls game, they had no faith in it doing well. I'm sure that was totally worth it. But it wasn't always like this. In the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 era, Sony was a lot, lot more experimental. They put out everything you could think of and published a lot of weird games from other developers as well. You have to remember, Sony was originally a Japanese company. Today, they actively hiss at the idea that their company was once from the land of the Riding Sun. But back then, they fully embraced it. They put out and published a ton of weird, quirky games only people from Japan could come up with. Look, only people from Japan could come up with Ape Escape, a 3D collectathon platformer where the main goal is to catch primates and nets only in Japan. Nowadays, the apes are no longer escaping anything because they're fucking dead, which is a shame because sometimes we really need a palate cleanser from all the same over the shoulder shit. And back in the day, Sony would put out all sorts of games. One minute they're releasing a platform about a cartoon thief, the next a gore fest hack and slash for the world's angriest man, and then next you would get a game about giant monsters doing it out in the cities destroying everything in their path. Sony were indeed the definition of experimental back in the day. But what happens when you get too experimental? What happens when a game is so incomprehensible there is no way you can even market it? Well, there was one game that Sony themselves threw money at, and it's incredibly strange and incredibly obscure. It is my privilege to introduce to you all the world of Poiny's Poin. So, what is this clown nightmare world you're staring at right now? Well, this is Poiny's Poin. Released in 2002, this game was developed by a company named Alvion. Al Alvion? Uh, I, I, I don't know how to pronounce this shit. From what I've looked up, they seem to be a support studio, a studio you contact to help make development go a lot smoother and faster. This game, however, was made entirely by them. But that's not the important part. The important part is, this game was published by Sony themselves. They looked at this game, saw potential in it, and threw money at it to get it out the door. And despite that, it didn't seem to do very much for the game, because this game 
is extremely obscure. It's so obscure, it doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. There is very little information about this game online. And a big reason for that is, this game was only released in Japan. It never saw the light of day anywhere else. There were a dime a dozen games on the PS2 that never left Japan. But what makes Pointy's Point special is, the game is entirely playable in English. N not only does it have a full English translation, but it's fully voiced in English as well. Welcome to Jelly Town. This is a happening, happy, non-stop party on dude kind of town, dude. Hell, from what the game tells you, it seems like English was what this game was developed around. So why the hell did a game only released in Japan get developed entirely in English? Also, before starting, it asks you for your age. Why? Is it gonna groom me or something? The minute you start the game, you are smacked with a tidal wave of strangeness. <laughs> Bon Jovi. Oh, it turns out it was just a movie trailer. Well, ain't that some foreshadowing? So then the game actually starts, and you play as Pointy. Pointy is uh, well, he's uh, well, I I don't know what he is. I don't know what any of these characters are. Who's this guy? My granddad has been living here since the town was built. He says points have been here all along. Well, pardon us, Mr. Gucci Loafers. I've been playing for three minutes, and I don't know what or who anything is. I don't even know what the hell a point is. So it looks like we got some Dark Souls shit going on here. I gotta play the game to know what anything is. We are downtown in the center of Jelly Town, and up to the... Why is the main character shaking his ass like that? Oh my god, I think it really was trying to groom me. So I explore town for a bit, and then suddenly, a cutscene plays. Help! Help! Love and soul, the relax, the relax. We end up in a sewer, Pointy and the girl talk a bit, and this is when the game takes a sudden turn with the introduction of another new character. Ta-da! What? Ah! Yikes! What is this? What is this? Yeah. Moving right along. This is a living point. Very special. Would you be so kind as to teach this kid how to use points for me? <laughs> Things I do for you, babe. But then again, a babe in need is a babe indeed. Nope. Your ears are not deceiving you. That is indeed a duck that sounds like Eric Cartman from South Park. What an extremely odd, yet entertaining development choice. From what I've heard, and I don't, I don't know if this is true or not, but apparently, the guy who did the voice for Eric Cartduck here worked on the early dubs of South Park in Japan, and I guess they got him to do voice work here, and this is the performance he chose. Come on, Nidin, babe. Stop calling me babe, Roundy! How would you like to suck my balls? Oh, and by the way, he's with you the rest of the game. He's your companion. Eat your ass, I mean hard out, Midna. Duck Cartman has got you beat. So then they decide to give you an explanation on what a poin actually is. Apparently, a poin is some big ball that is a manifestation of emotions. Yellow is happiness, blue is sadness, and red is anger. You can throw them, mix them together, and if you throw one of the same color at another, it vanishes. This is the main pool of the game. You use points to throw at enemies to either cue them or their emotions and use them to solve puzzles. Like, for example, if a tree is in the way, you take a red point, throw it at a character, and they get angry. They then rush over to the tree and knock it over. That kind of stuff. So yeah, that's basically what this game boils down to. Throwing balls at characters to cure them of their poison emotions, or using the balls to solve puzzles. And that's about as deep as this game gets. Like, legit, it's a really simple game once you get down to it. 
Pony can only do two things. Jump and pick up points. Everybody else has got to do the dirty work for you. So the game's really simple, we've established that, but it should be known even though the gameplay is simple, what really makes this game is the personality. Each enemy in this game is actually an NPC, and you can talk to almost all of them after you cure them, and most of them have unique dialogue. Pony, you're going to help us on Poker Street! If you fail, something horrible will happen! But not only that, they all have unique animations and effects depending on which state they're in, which I imagine takes a lot of work. We're not octopuses. Oh no, we're not. We are henchies. Oh yes, we are. Ugh, I don't like the voice of these things. It sounds like they're coming on to me. So with all these weird-ass characters, you might be wondering, what's the story of this game? Why are you meeting all these people in the first place? Well, honestly, I couldn't really tell you. The main driving point that happens at the start of the game is, there's this nasty little girl named Lolo who has poisoned all of Jellytown with poison boings and her army of Hellneals. Yes, they're called Hellneals. The little girl you meet is named Lilin, and she tells you to cure everyone in town for her. And after that, the plot just meanders. Pony must have short-term memory loss because he quickly drops the entire cure everyone in town plan and spends the rest of the game trying to find out where he lives. Excuse me. What? There's no time for that. That's what most of this game is. A wild goose chase. You ask one person do they know where he lives, they say, No, but this person might know. You ask them, partake in a boss fight, and after that you ask them and they're like, No, but this person might know where your house is. That is what 80% of this game is. Pony going through hell and back just to find out where he lives. But you're not playing this game for the story. The gameplay is pretty simple too, so what are you playing it for then? Well. That would be the main NPC interactions. This game is constantly changing the locations you visit, and it's constantly introducing new characters. Each one is crazier than the last. A lot of the important NPCs show up, do something ridiculous, sometimes fight you, tell you they don't know where you live, refuse to elaborate, and then disappear for the rest of the game. For example, you're told about a guy named Pillow, who supposedly knows everything in Jellytown. You go to ask him where you live, but then you find a news article in the house about John's lake, a lake that is drying up because of a drought. So you go to the lake and have a fight with John. Mister, you say? Water, you say? <laughs> ah, <laughs> then there's fighting words, laddie. You make him cry until the entire lake is filled up, which floods all of Jellytown. Tails! Thousands are dead! So you go back to the house with a news article, and now the entire house is just gone. It's gone. So you now have access to a jungle. You go through the jungle and you meet Pillow at the end, who makes you help him build his house before he'll tell you where you live. So you help him build his house, and apparently he doesn't know where your house is after all. Useless bastard. But he tells you about a chef. A chef who uses dynamite in his cooking. So you go to his restaurant and- Oh my god, he's horrifying. You know who I am! I am the cookie! I am the cookie! I am the bully bully cookie! Who the hell would let Porky Pentagram here cook for them? You ask him where your house is, but he makes you go through Hell's Kitchen before he'll tell you. Man, Rainforest was never the same after 2015. So after you get through his kitchen, he makes you cook a dish with him. And after you cook the dish, he causes the entire kitchen to explode. And after all that, he tells you the explosion made him forget where your house is. Son of a bitch. That's what most of this game is. The only reoccurring characters are the petite gang. Oh yeah, near the start of the game, you join a gang. You get in a tussle with the leader, then he gets poisoned with the points, then you cure him, and then he lets you in. The Petite Gang are a bunch of orphans that are watched by... That's a big bitch! My little pumpkins! Your tomatoes up no good again! When are you gonna stop treating us like half a kid and start showing us gangsters some respect? She looks after them because, in her own words, no one else will. The reason that lady looks after the Petite Gang is because... She misses her son who died. Oh shit, I, I, I didn't know this game got that deep. 
Holy shit, th there's some lore going on here. You're fucking slacking. But she's a nice lady though. She throws you a party for just joining the gang. Uh, guys, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the enemy is partying here with us. Uh, uh, are, uh, uh, they're just here. Uh, are we gonna do something about this? Anything? They're here. We, we can, uh, we can, I don't know, club their faces in or something? Anything? Okay, then I'll, uh, I'll just leave. This game is just non-stop absurdity from start to end. Things just happen, and characters just show up, and they just so happen to be connected to Pointy's goal of trying to get home. At one point, Pointy runs out of options and decides to head to the next town over to see if he lives there. And to get there, you need to go there by train. And of course, the damn train needs to talk to you first. Scared the pants off you now, did I, eh? I'm old Edgar. My steam isn't what it used to be, but I had my day in the sun. And before you head off to the next town, you're stopped by... What's shaking? Oh my god, who the hell is this clown? Some spoiled rich kid who refuses to let them go to the next town over. But then, later on, he, he meets up with Lolo, and they team up. Yes, you, the babe in the sunglasses. How would you like to spend some time with God's gift to the female species? But then he turns on her and becomes the main villain? This dude has barely banned the damn game and now he's the main villain who wants to take over Jellytown? Oh, and get this Shyamalan twist. Before the last level, Lilin reveals the truth. Her and Lolo are sisters and they're aliens from a planet called Planet Point. The two most normal looking characters in the game are aliens. Go figure. The two of them got into a fight. They, they, they never tell you what the fight was about. But because of the fight, Lolo decided to poison all of Jellytown to get back at her sister. Jesus, I, I pray she never breaks up with any boyfriends. The whole country might be nuked because of it. So yes, the final level, you take a spaceship in the shape of... And you land on Planet Point to stop Lolo and the rich kid, who's only been in the game for five minutes. He takes over the plot and sends a huge poison point at Jellytown. we do? I thought we passed a law banning French people. Oh well. You managed to beat him, but the poison point has already hit Jellytown. You land back in town. All's well that ends well, right? Find it abandoned, and you find out one person managed to absorb the entire giant poem ball, which would be Pointy's mom. Mommy? Oh, Mommy! Mommy, the chick with the maraca for the head is your mommy green? That's a mother, all right! Whoa, Pointy! Your mom is bitching! Yes. The final boss of the game is Pointy's mother. You and the petite gang gang up to take her down, and I gotta say, this game was pretty easy, but this final boss is obnoxious. You gotta hit one of the petite gang members with a point, and then you have to pick up a point and hold it, because one of the members will knock your mom out, causing her to slam her head on the ground. You're basically forced to take damage, because the only way to damage your mom is to let yourself get hit by her slamming her head on you while you're holding a point. God, just, just listen to me trying to explain this. They're gonna lock me up in the nut house. <laughs> so you're close to being your mom, but you run out of points. Cartman decides that since he's a point, he'll just sacrifice himself so you can save your mom. We were a great combination, we even greater friends. I'll be watching you, I'll be watching you. She gets cured and the two of them head home, and the game ends. It just ends like that. Oh yeah, this game is really short. My, my first time was about five hours, but that's a good summary of what this game is. A drug trip. From start to finish, it's just weird and random shit happening for the sake of happening with a loose plot holding it all together, and then after a short while, it, it just stops. Oh yeah, by the way, Doug Carmen turns out to be fine at the end of the credits. Sure glad he survived.
While this game is very simple, I can't say it wasn't entertaining. The NPC interactions are what keeps you going. During a conversation, sometimes they'll just blurt out things that either make no sense, or they make no sense being in a game like this. Hell, sometimes they'll just flat out swear! Ain't no you want, ain't no thing to make porn your damn self. But I ain't playing witness to some weird ass second sucker. Villain, huh? Sounds pretty plain to me. What's your middle name? Something exciting like Jane? Back to your cage, Bess! We're gonna have to get you a new muzzle! Man, can't live with them, can't shoot them! And I think that's a big reason why this game is so obscure. I believe because there was a full English dub made for this, and it seems to be the default, there were plans to have this come outside Japan. And it's not a perfect translation either. There are spelling mistakes, mispronunciations, and text that doesn't match up to the voices at all. But still, Sony saw potential in this and published it. But only in Japan. I'm guessing any plans to have it officially localized for scrap because, well, how the hell do you advertise this? The game is too simple for adult gamers in 2002 to enjoy, but it can't be for kids because the characters are swearing up a storm and threatening to shoot each other. Who is this game for? Well, I'll tell you who it's for. Me! I live for this weird kind of shit. The fact this game got funding by one of the biggest companies in the game industry, and yet no one seems to know about it, is amazing to me. With how Sony is today, they would never even bat an eye at a game like this. They can't even give the Ape Escape creator anything for the 20th anniversary. They memory hold Gravity Rush 2 and Cat as a character from their lineup. It really feels like that Sony is just embarrassed by the fact that they were once a Japanese developer. They don't care for the weird and wacky shit anymore. Which is a shame. All the AAA games they pump out, just, they become forgettable and predictable. You play a game like Pony's Point once, and you will never forget it. This game will be at the back of my mind for the rest of my life. I'll be on my deathbed after an overdose of American food, and Pointy's Point will never leave my subconscious. If you ever get the chance, try this game out. It's not going to blow your mind, but it will stay in it. Join the court of Point with us, and may the Point be with you.